quick intro. This is not aimed at seasoned campaigners. This is aimed at those that are thinking about going or maybe you've got a trip book next year. And this will help you out with some of the potential pitfalls or 12 things that can actually ruin your holiday that you wait for all year, that you save up for. If you're like me, but I'm not famous, nobody gives me any tackle, I don't get any free holidays, I'm not sponsored by anybody. These opinions are mine and mine alone from 20 years ago into France and you know, making some of the mistakes hopefully you will avoid. Why on the bucket? Well, some of the best information, best tips, best conversations I've had. There's either been somebody sitting on a bucket in my swim or I've pulled up a bait bucket in their swim. You know, everybody forgets their guest chairs, don't they? It's a waste of space. So, some of the best info comes from that, so that's why. Welcome to On The Bucket. <laughs> Make sure you get there with as little grief as possible. There are so many things that can go wrong on the way to the lake, so a little bit of preparation can stop that happening. If you drive and survive like I do, make sure the car's up to it. You know, make sure it's recently serviced or you've changed the oil. Make sure the tyres are okay, especially because you're going to do a lot of miles with a lot of weight. You know. Right? Have a little folder hidden in the car with your registration document in it, your insurance, you know, everything that you need, okay? There are certain things you've got to carry in the car if you're going to be on French motorways, yeah? So you're supposed to carry a red triangle, you're supposed to carry spare bulbs which are accessible, you're supposed to carry a first aid kit, a fire extinguisher, a breath test kit in date, right? and a first aid kit, uh, uh, yellow jackets. The thing about the yellow jackets right, is they're supposed to be accessible, which makes sense if you think about it, because if you break down on a motorway and you are then getting out of the car and fumbling around at the back and opening the boot and you, you can't be seen and looking for your yellow jackets, right? So they're supposed to be accessible. The thing to do with those is to make them very, very visible from the front. If there's two of you, make sure both yellow jackets are very visible. Just imagine a policeman at a checkpoint. All right? Imagine Monsieur le gendarme at the checkpoint, looking at the car, and if he sees the two jackets that are to hand, then you're kind of sending signals that, yes, I know what the rules are, and I am obeying them. All right? So you're less likely to get stopped, because they, you know, they don't want to stop you and get bored to death with some anorak going, oh, yes, monsieur, I have my Alcatraz kit, would you like to see it, you know, and here's my first aid kit, my red triangle, right? They'll probably know that you're carrying everything that you should do, you know. So, so make sure you've got all that. You've got to check your passports as well uh, these days, because we're not in the EU anymore, all right? And make sure your passports uh, do not expire within the next six months, or you're going to encounter problems at the border crossing. The other thing is your registration plate. We don't have GB stickers anymore, it's a UK sticker. Um, if you've got Euro plates on your car, you know, the little blue circle with the GB in it, at the moment, they're okay. I mean, I went through in June, uh, and I had them on, and I was okay. But if you haven't got those, and you've just got plain plates, you're going to need a UK uh, sticker on the back of the car. You know? And, you know, consider consider uh, breakdown insurance. I mean, I've, I've had that for years. I've only ever used it once, but when I needed it, it was superb. It was brilliant. So, don't let the holiday get ruined before you even get there, yeah? Make sure you get there with the minimum amount of grief. Number two. Avoid accidents or fines. This is about driving in France, again, get into the lake, yeah? First off, know your route, more or less, know where you're going, know roughly which motorways you're going on. If there are any really tricky bits at certain junctions or certain lanes that you've got to be in, then Google map it before you go, do the little yellow man, you know, actually drive it online before you do and look out how things are signposted and, and what to head for in order to get where you want to be. Um, 
If it's your first time driving in France, then don't worry, it's, it, you'll be fed into it very gently. As soon as you come off the ferry or you come out of the tunnel, you are fed onto a French motorway system. So you can't go anywhere but straight on. Usually there's, there's mostly two lanes most of the time, but sometimes it's three. But my advice to you would be to sit in the right hand lane, as it is, get used to looking in your left hand mirror because that will then become your most important for seeing people that are overtaking you and when you want to do an overtake right? and just get used to driving and relying on your left hand mirror you get used to it really quickly to be honest right? and you'll find that the um, uh, the French drive most rural motorways in France are only two lanes and you'll think well you might need more than that why are you in two lanes it works really well to be honest because the French drivers are better than we are and what you'll find is that when you're on these two lane motorways people come up they indicate as soon as they come past you they indicate and they're back in again nobody lingers in lane two right or the left hand lane as it is you know, the outside lane nobody lingers in that lane they indicate they pull in straight away and then they indicate they pull out and pull in again after the truck so it very rarely gets clogged up they're better drivers than we are i mean anybody that's been on the m1 or the m25 will know you know the other thing that's really sensible which i quite like about the, the french is they trust you as a driver they treat you like adults because the speed limits are variable if you get on the motorways you'll see that you have a choice of speed limit it will say it's either 110 kilometers an hour or it's 130 kilometers an hour and the difference is that if it's raining you do 110 if it's nice and sunny and dry you can do 130 so I mean I quite like that the fact that they, they treat you like grown-ups and like you do that a word of caution though um, so obviously you can go faster on their motorways than you can on ours because 130 is about 85 80, you know between 80 and 85 um, but be careful in their towns uh, respect the towns because uh, some of the speed limits are very very low in the towns and don't forget most of us go on a Saturday Saturday can be a school day in France so just be careful and respectful in the towns but on the motorways you know make sure you've got enough money for tolls because some of them it will say piage a thousand meters you know so it's just a row of booths you pick up a ticket you drive your distance whatever it is and then when you try to come off the motorway system you go through another piage I think it is I think it's piage and then um, you pay whatever however you know however much it is it could be 10 euros it could be 15 it could be 20 you know it could be 40 it depends how far you've gone you know um, so make sure you've got the money for the tolls um, and rest if you get tired rest there are loads and I like this about a French motorway system you've got your normal busy services with you know bright lights garages cafes all kinds of things like that you know oh diesel is gaswell by the way right but you've got those kind of services but about every four or five mile you, there'll be another kind of services and they are very very regular and they're called air de whatever it's called you know like air de carp or whatever right but the airs all it is is you pull off it's usually a toilet some tables and chairs and a lovely little wooded area and a parking space that's it yeah so these are quite good if you get tired pull off there you know lock the car obviously but you can get a couple of hours kip if you're doing it if it's a long trip you can get a couple of hours kip in there something like that so those are good and they're very regular you know so don't have an accident through being tired you know uh, so allow plenty of time I mean don't don't cut it dead fine you know if you if the briefing at the lake is at 12 you know don't go tearing us in Dublin Motorway going oh shit shit we've only got another we've only got another half hour we're gonna be late you're much better off giving yourself loads of time stopping off at a cafe having a coffee or something like that and then getting there with loads of time to spare you know uh, <laughs> and one last thing I'd say is if you do get stopped, be respectful. Yeah, I mean I've spoken to the, I got stuck at, I got stuck at a, I got stuck at a, a 
couple of tall ones, so I couldn't work out how to do it. And for some reason, it wasn't working. And I had a, of all luck, I had a gendarme behind me, and um, he came to help me. And uh, one other thing, don't strangle the French language. I know it's tempting for the English. We love we love doing that when we learn it at school, but don't strangle it because I got shouted at by this gendarme because he asked me where I was going, where I come from, and I said Reims, and he shouted at me, Rem! Uh, right, number three. This is, this is only gonna be a quick one, but it's probably one of the most important. It's the first thing that I look at when I'm going over there, and that is the leg stock, okay? We only go to France for one reason. We go over there to smash our PBs, right for for me i don't go to france to catch 20s right we go over there for big fish to smash our pbs we wait all year for it so what i would suggest is check the information very carefully some lakes in france put on there there are carp in here up to 40 pound and there are but there's probably only one and that one will be the apex fish Unless you are extremely lucky, you are not going to get the apex fish. So, if your PB in the UK, say it's 30, 35, you know, then choose a lake that has got a lot of 40s in it. And give yourself the best chance. You don't want your holiday ruined, sitting there for seven days, having a great old time, catching loads of 20s, loads of 25s, but you don't get anything over 33. Yeah, that's not why we go to France. So check out the stock carefully there are plenty of fishery managers and bailiffs because they know because the fish come out who will actually put down that there are 260s in this lake there are 1550s you know there are at least 25 40s you know and then the average weight of the fish is such and such they will they will list that and tell you so choose your lake carefully make sure the fish are in there that you want to catch Right, number four, the lake. Choose carefully. You've got to make your mind up. What kind of a carp fisherman are you? Do you want the peace and tranquility? Loads of room, loads of space, loads of countryside on your own or we've got one other mate? Or... Do you want something a bit more social? Do you want the Sky TV, the bar, the meals, lots of other people there, very busy, uh, so you've got more of a social scene, stuff like that. I've done both, I've enjoyed them both. Um, it's, it's a matter of personal preference, whatever you want. But if you choose the wrong one for you, then that will ruin your holiday. You know? So you want to know what's near it as well. Have a look on Google Maps, you know. I mean, if, if there's a factory nearby, you want to know. You know, I mean, I, I have had that once when I went, we arrived at the weekend, it was absolutely gorgeous, beautiful. And then at six o'clock on Monday morning, all these floodlights came on and, and a, there was a gravel works there. And that happened every morning at six o'clock. So, you know, have a look on the map. What's near it? Is there a motorway next to it? Is there a main road next to it? Is it busy? You know, you want to know. If, if you are the type of angler that wants peace and quiet and tranquility, then, you know, check it out carefully. Uh, are there gravel bars? Are there weed? It doesn't matter. You can cope with all these things, but you want to know beforehand, don't you? You know, if you've got there and it's choked with weed and you haven't got this, the stuff that you need to deal with that, then you want to know beforehand. So check out the lake. There are hundreds and hundreds of lakes in France. It's like online dating, you know? If you don't find the one you like, psh, go to the next. So be careful of the lake. Right, number five. You're gonna like this one, because we're all conservationists, right? <laughs> Wildlife. Find out before you go, all right? Because, uh, let's see, what can cause you problems in you and your these? Rats, if there's a problem with rats, don't forget we're sitting next to water with lots of sweet and wonderful smelling stuff and what have you, you know? So you need to be able to seal things up, including your food, all right? So, rats, poisson chat can be a problem. Crayfish, swans can ruin your margin fishing because if they get a taste for what you're chucking down the margins, those necks are long, then you'll be surprised what they can pick up. 
um, coot. You know, like I've seen coot dive down 15 feet for maize. Uh, the Dutch call them boily keppers, boily chickens. Yeah, so they can be a problem. Uh, frogs. <laughs> you wouldn't think frogs, would you? But uh, if frogs start and they start competing across the lake with each other, then you can have a symphony of frogs that will go on all night and you won't get any sleep. Do you know I, mean? I have encountered that. I mean, most of these things we can cope with quite easily. You take the appropriate kit for everything else that I've mentioned. Or, you, know. um, you just want to know before you get there, don't you? You know, uh, you know muskrats, koi poo. You might encounter a koi poo. They look like a beaver. Uh, quite big if you're not quite sure what they are they could be quite you know they give you a start but they're totally docile they won't they won't dive down for your baits or anything like that all koi poo will do is they'll sit on the bank and you can feed them maize they'll swim across your lines you'll know it's a koi poo because if you've got three or four rods out then they'll swim across your lines and they'll go beep 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 mm nice and slowly so but they don't cause any problem they don't cause you bait that's about it with that you know and other cows other horses there anything like that that have access to the lake it's not a problem you just want to know before you go you know um got dogs barking nearby if there's a kennel or something like that because it'll disturb your sleep you know so all these things you can cope with um but uh but you just want to know before you get there okay Number six, having arrived in France on the lake of your dreams, don't get kicked off it. The lake rules. Make sure you're happy with them all and you have read them all before you even book. Only once have I seen somebody thrown off of a lake. It was a drunken fight between some blokes who were having an argument because somebody was testing a bait and had promised he would share it with the others and didn't basically and caught fish and they didn't so it ended up in a big punch up and they all got kicked off so I've only seen that the once but check out the rules because you know it, it can be anything from uh, barbed hooks or barbless hooks you know braid a lot of the times they won't let you use braid you have to use mono or fluoro you know so nets the size of your nets your waistlings waders usually they're pretty sensible most of these rules and they are there usually for the benefit of yourself or the benefit of the fish you know if it's a bait boat check out beforehand you know if, if you want to use your bait boat are you allowed to use them before you go now you don't want to fall foul of the bailiffs or the fishery managers basically you've got to apply the pink tutu philosophy if you want to fish their lake then abide by their rules don't put yourself in a position where you're going to get kicked off even with bait sometimes with particles uh, you won't be able to use any particles other than those that are supplied by the fishery manager for obvious for obvious reasons you know so um, one other thing uh, that, that I have encountered that I didn't like and that is uh, ambush purchases is this has only happened to me once where I've turned up at a lake and all of a sudden nothing on the website nothing in the rules no nothing where you've been forced to buy something in order to fish the lake because oh we only allow these particular things and you have to buy them from us okay which I didn't like my mate didn't like it, it set the tone of the week rather badly yeah um, are you going to get a map of your fishing area? Sometimes this can be a bad sign. If you get a map with little squares drawn on it, then that can be an indication that there are too many anglers on the lake, and you know there could be there could be uh, disagreements over who's fishing where. You know, so but if you want to fish the lake, then abide by the rules because you don't want to be kicked off, do you? They'll do rig checks as well, you know. I've, I've, I've encountered that very rarely. Is uh, only once, and, and that was because a mate of mine had just caught a 40 pounder years ago, and uh, the bailiff came round immediately to check rigs. He didn't check mine, he checked my mates, and then he buggered off. So, 
you know, it does happen. So make sure you know all the rules and you are happy with them. Number seven, this is a quick one, this. Is it Peggy? What I mean by that is, does this lake have a hot swim? Or are the fish spread out? It's not very nice if you sitting on a lake watching somebody catch fish all week and you don't even get a run. No, that can, that can be a bit... If you've got exclusive use of the lake, then you can work it out amongst your mates if you're going in a group, if you're going in a particular crew about are you prepared to rotate, you know. Um, I've, I've, seen, I've seen it done, I've seen it done both ways. I've seen somebody sit on the fish and, and take them all week and refuse to move and I've seen, you know, I've been in crews where people have been quite happy to sort of rotate a few days about and let everybody have a turn. Um, but it, it's something that you want to know beforehand and you want to work out beforehand before you get there. Um, it's better off choosing a lake where the fish come out from all over. Sometimes the reason they're peggy is because over winter, especially in spring, is over winter um, the fish are fed in one place, in one place only, and that tends to be in front of the lodge. Um, you know, find a lake where they they spread out the feed and stuff like that, and the fish come out from all over, and you you'll have a better chance of enjoying your holiday in France. Right, number eight. This kind of leads on from the last one. It's what I call the bag of balls. As carp anglers, why do we leave anything to chance? There's a kink in your line, you change it. If you think your hook's blunt, you change it. You know, if you've had a fish that you've been playing for an hour, you retie your knots, don't you? Right, however, the bag of balls. Drawing for swims is what I'm talking about. You don't have to do it anymore, unless it's a unless it's a particular weight lake that you really have to get on. Right? But other than that, there are many many lakes in France now where you can select the swim, you can book your swim before you go there, and then you can do all the research on it and everything else. But we wait all year, you know. Oh, I do. You know, we wait all year. We save our money and what have you. I love my trips to France and what have you. Why leave it to chance at the last minute? Because you're weak can depend on what ball comes out of that bag. So, for me, I'd book one where you can select your swims beforehand. Number nine, the facilities. Make sure you check out and know what's there. All right? Whether there's water, whether there's toilets, whether there's power, whether there's a fridge, whether there's a freezer. You know, If there isn't, you can cope with these things, you just need to know beforehand. You know, Can you charge things up? We all like to charge things up these days, whether it's bait boats, you know, phones, Kindles, whatever, whatever it is. Or are you going to need to take loads of power packs with you? You know, you need to know these things before you go. All right. um, the uh, here's a controversial subject: the lake boilies. All right, do some research beforehand. I've had very mixed experiences with lake boilies. Um, some of them have been. Uh, hailed as being absolutely wonderful and everything comes out on the lake boilies but uh, when you put them on they dissolve after an hour or two hours you know uh, i mean I, I i can understand fishery managers wanting to protect uh, the lakes and not having tons of boilies on the on the lake beds yeah i understand that but um but some of them you know check it out beforehand because you might you might be better off taking your own um you know can you can you drive to your swim? You know, can you drive around this place? Can you unload? If not, is there any means of getting your tackle to your swim? Things like that. Can you park your car safely? You know, all all these things you need to know beforehand. You know, it's not a problem. You can you can usually cope with most of it, but just find out what facilities are there before you go. Hey, number ten. I'm going to preface this one by saying that uh, ninety nine percent nearly all of the lake owners and fishery managers and bailiffs that I've met have been wonderful, very helpful, strike the perfect balance between being there if you need help or leaving you alone in peace to fish, which is, which is what you want. However, every now and then you will encounter a crazy bailiff or manager or something like that, you know. I've already mentioned the uh, uh, 
dodgy rig checks, you know, the ambush purchases, stuff like that. Is I was once shouted at, having driven 700 miles, I was once shouted at because I was 30 minutes early at the late gates. Um, I've seen, oh, oh, you know, drunken, drunken bailiffs slagging off people that are on the lake really loudly that they can be heard and, and caused arguments, stuff like that. Firearms uh, is a good one. Uh, I've encountered that a couple of times where um, the owner's been shooting across the lake under the guise of pest control. Uh, he wasn't a very good shot, but there were people around the lake while he was shooting, uh, which was a little bit alarming, you know. I've, uh, I've suddenly had people appear behind me in the middle of the night in full camos carrying a crossbow, and that was... Uh, that was one of the bailiffs looking for rats. Um, so these things do happen. Um, and be prepared when you arrive. Be prepared for the usual, uh, ah, you should have been here last week, boys. The crew that were here last week, ah, they did really well. Really good anglers, they took it apart and all this, right? <laughs> Most places I go to hear the same thing, you know? <laughs> they always say that. <laughs> or, or you really start to worry if they say to you it's not a runs water you know <laughs> it's not runs water so but it is it's very rare check out the info online information is spread so fast these days if there is somebody like that they tend not to last very long but <laughs> check it out online but if you do meet one it can spoil your holiday number 11 it's going to sound obvious this, but I have been at lakes and arrived when one of the crew was suddenly said, oh shit, I forgot my alarms, or oh shit, I didn't bring my landing net, or oh shit, my unhooking mat's got holes in it from the mice in my garage that I didn't check, right, double check everything. Mm. You are going to France for the fish of a lifetime, hopefully, that's what we all go for. Don't leave anything to chance. Double check everything before you go. Your lines, your hooks, how long is your line been on your reel? You know, if you can afford it, change it, you know. Or if it's been used a lot in, in the past, you know, check it. Has it got any kinks in it? You know, the, the last thing you want to do is whack a lead out 100 yards and then when you're bringing a fish back in, suddenly see that there's a, a horrible kink in it somewhere and, you know, you lose the fish of a lifetime. So. Double check everything before you go, you know? So, and don't change anything. If, you, if you're successful in the UK, you know, is don't suddenly think you have to change everything when you go to France, you don't. You know, don't be seduced by sponsored experts. They were trying to sell you the latest bit of kit, this, that and the other, you know, and, um, you know, a, a lot of it is tosh. Yeah, I mean, I, I wish people would stop dragging hook links across their hands and going, oh, look at that, a superb rig. It, it's, it's nonsense. It bears no resemblance to a feeding fish underwater, sucking and blowing, you know? If you want to replicate that, then, you know, work out a suction machine underwater and then show us what it does. You know, in gravity, in air, it bears no resemblance to what's going on, so I wish they'd stop doing it. So keep your rig simple, you know, whatever works for you in the UK, keep it simple, keep it strong. You know, and retie after every fish, just in case. You know, hooks. I'm talking about mainly. You know, or hooks, or you know, or your 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 swivel knot, or something like that. You know, but double check everything before you go. Sounds obvious, right? The next one that's coming up. Mm, I think you should watch on your own. If you've got this far, then you're probably quite serious about going and are going to go. So watch the next one on your own. You'll see. Right, <clears throat> number 12. <clears throat> the one that might cause arguments. This is why I said watch it on your own. <clears throat> Be very careful who you spend a week in France with. I'm talking about crew members, I'm talking about partner, you know, your best mate, whatever. Right? <laughs> Be careful. Make sure you've got somebody who can sit next to you <clears throat> and if you arrived on a Saturday morning and you haven't had a run and it's Wednesday morning 
that that person can stay cheerful, can stay positive, can go through the tough times in order to get the fish because we're all going over there for the fish of a lifetime, right? So make sure you've got somebody who is strong enough to do that, all right? Is, I was on a lake once when we hired a very expensive bait boat and left a hefty deposit for it. And <clears throat> on the Wednesday, um, this bloke had not caught anything and suddenly screamed at the top of his lungs that he hated the effing lake and he kicked the bait boat several times and stomped off across some fields and he wasn't seen for three hours. Um, so, you know, just be careful who you spend a week in France with. Make sure you know who you're going with, right? Do they snore? Right? That's another thing. Are you going to get any sleep? Yeah? <laughs> you don't want to be sitting next to somebody <clears throat> who moans like a drain and whinges and whines and twines about everything if it's not going right, you know? It's the lake, it's the swim, it's the weather, it's the bait, it's me rods, it's me lines, this don't work, that don't work, I'm not happy, whinging and whining, it'll drive you mad. All right, by the end of the week, you'll feel like shoving him in the bloody lake. Right? So, and the last thing, the other important thing is, can he take photos? You know, I mean, one of my one of my best mates who uh, that I fished with for several years in France and what have you uh, had the terrible shakes and just could not take photos for for the life. Some of the some of the wonderful fish that I caught and you know the photos are crap. Ah, oh, mate, it destroys you. Right? is what you want is somebody that can take photos and just remind them two heads and a tail is what you want in the frame two heads and a tail so just be careful you go to France with